صباح حبايبي and welcome back to Wumina's channel. I'm Lisa Freyha, founder of Wumina and your favorite feminist on the internet. So let's go on some adventures and pick apart some day-to-day -day misogyny that I come across along the way. This week, one of my best oldest friends is coming to visit me in Guna. We have a full week of adrenaline and then I find out that women are basically square watermelons. All that and more in episode seven. So this week, one of my oldest friends comes to visit and it got me so excited. This is my friend Mike. What's up? What's up? known each other since we were kids but now he's like a grown man with a jaw and a worry line right here because he's so worried about all the responsibilities that he has all the time oh man <laughs> i have known mike for 20 years and you guys are not ready for how freaking cute our childhood photos are They have no idea what is ahead of them. And also they had no idea that they were gonna grow up into being strong, empowered, independent, badass, best friends. That's right. Anyways. I cannot wait to show him around, to have a good time, to just catch up with my friend. And of course, to take you guys along for the ride with us. Now what's going to be fun in this adventure is that Mike is a huge adrenaline junkie and I am not. I'm a play junkie, not an adrenaline junkie. Mike's gearing up to look like a cross between Jason Bourne and Mario Kart. Thor. Very nice. Yeah. Looks great. <laughs> so uh, they ran out of big shirts. Mike is wearing a children's size 12. No, 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 my arms are just huge. <laughs> the first order of business when he arrived was to have us jump into a lagoon. And that's it. That, that was it. That was the baby step. Then Mike figured out a way to get me to do something that nobody else has been able to get me to do in 20 years. And that was to go go kart. Today is a Mike Lee adventure day and a scare the shit out of Elisa day. So the last time. I went go-karting. I broke my arm pretty badly in two places. And I was about 13 years old. But Mike has convinced me right. to give it another shot. I'm terrified. <laughs> Ready to race, hello. And I did it! I did it, guys! I go go-karting but I went around it a bunch of times and each time I was getting faster and faster and faster and faster and shaving off seconds and I felt like I was in the Formula One. Champion of the world! But in a very small version of it. <laughs> you good? I'm okay. Not dead? I'm alive. And no broken bones or anything. No. Yes. Watch out if there's a kart racing thing near you, I might be racing now. Unlikely. I didn't even believe that. You didn't believe that? I didn't believe that either. Okay. So obviously while Mike was here, he's a PT. So we were working out. We we're going to the gym almost every day, which is new for me. Just walk us through that one more, please. Drop that you just did. Nice. Can you do it in super slow-mo? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you could just slow the video down. Nah, you got it. I mean, no disrespect to Mike, but working out of the gym has been a struggle for me. Okay, like most of us, it's not something that comes easily. It's not something that you're always looking forward to. And it's taken me a few years to be able to really lock in what's important for me as an individual to work on in the gym. At first, it used to be, oh, I want these tight abs and I want my ass to look like this and I want my thighs to be all toned. 
and it was about how I looked. Whereas now it's so much more about how I feel. I want to feel strong. I want to feel better posture. I want to feel like my body has my back, literally. <laughs> Focusing on how I feel versus how I look is a big shift that has happened in the last couple years. And it really makes me think of square watermelons. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I said that right, square watermelons. There's such a thing as a square watermelon. And no, it is not natural. It is literally grown into a square shape in order to pack it more efficiently and be able to, I guess, just sell it at a premium, right? So they make a few different shapes of watermelons. They make squares and they make hearts. I've also found heart and star shaped cucumbers. And why this makes me think of square watermelons is because I thought about that young Freja and that young Mike that we just saw a few minutes ago. They didn't realize that they were going to be growing up into a society that was going to start putting these cages around them. They didn't realize that they were these baby watermelons growing up in a caged society that was going to be leaving literal marks on our bodies. All this made me think about this week's feminist answer. I thought about how young women are conditioned into starting to wear all of these restrictive clothing patterns and all for the wrong reasons, all for looking appropriate and looking sexy or beautiful or looking in a way that society deems acceptable. It makes me think of all those lines that are left on your body when you're removing your tights, your bra, your corset, your waist trainer, your Spanx, whatever it is. When you've taken all that off and you see these lines, these bra straps, these shackles, these remnants of that societal cage that we're expected to grow into and to fit into. We don't even realize it, but women from birth are conditioned to grow into these shackles and into this caged system. And it's up to us to decide to turn away from that, to reject it, and to focus on what feels right in our body, what feels right on our body, how we feel right within ourselves. That leads me to the question of this week, which is how long do you think you could go without wearing any of these restrictive items that suck and pull you in? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, you know the deal, at Umina or at Freja, which is my handle. It's not about looking gorgeous, darling. It's about feeling gorgeous. And I feel gorgeous in this light. <laughs> and makeup, um, whatever.